Welcome to the Pocatello Business Podcast, the only Pocatello podcast focused on providing profits for Pocatello people. If you love our town and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Pocatello Business Podcast with your friend, host, all-around great guy, and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. Okay. Everyone, we are here again with another episode of the Pocatello Business Podcast with my personal friend and professional and doctor, Derek Ravston. Uh, this guy, he, he is born and raised in Pocatello, correct? Am I correct uh, on that? Born in Otto Falls, grew up in Pocatello. Okay, yeah. You did you get your undergraduate from Idaho State University. You went on to uh, Des Moines uh, University over for medical school in Iowa. Uh, finishes up his res- residency in the University of Utah, and now he's a board-certified psychiatrist for how many years now? Uh, you know, I finished my residency in 1999. 1999? So, yeah. 22 years. So, okay, perfect. So he's not only the board-certified psychiatrist, he's also a business owner, and he owns Life Change Associates over there on South Fifth Avenue. So right next to the old... Um, Farmers Insurance, big building, right? Right. And it used to be Farmers Insurance, that building you bought, right? Yeah. This used to be their claim <clears throat> center, I guess. You know, so they okay. have an accident, drive in, they do the whatever. So perfect. Perfect. So what what inspired you to uh, to go into the you know medical field number one and then become a psychiatrist number two? You know, I think it was. Um, you know, I served a, a, a church mission in Italy, and uh, it, it it was very useful. I found during my, my time there it was just to find ways to serve and help people. And one was we we helped worked with a family. Their child had a had a degenerative uh, muscle disease, and so we'd go in do physical therapy and just help the family the way we could. And then I think it was that that I thought, gosh, as a career that would be, that that would probably feel pretty good to go in and help somebody like that. And so it set my path towards health, um, health care. And then long story, but ended up in uh, going to the medical school and um, was not thinking about um, psychiatry, surgery, family medicine. But, uh, you know, it was a, it was a rotation as a fourth year medical student at the state hospital. And they had a, a really excellent psychiatrist there, Mark Broadhead. He went on to be a residency, a psychiatry residency training director at University of Nevada, Reno. He was just a great teacher. And as a fourth year medical student, he just kind of turned me loose, just you know, work with patients, uh, do the evaluation, help prepare the orders, everything you do as a medical student. And it was like a, um, a light bulb went off. Um, people, experiences, questions I had, it just sort of seemed to all come together as well as an interest in people. And everybody has a story to tell. And no one could have been more uh, surprised than me when I told my wife and started telling her, so I think I'm gonna go into psychiatry. And uh, I was prepared to do family medicine. I'd interviewed, prepared for family medicine. And, uh, and I thought, well, if it was a mistake, I'll, I'll change my mind, I can always go back. But uh, no mistake. So awesome. well, that's, yeah, that's gotta be rewarding. You know, the things that you're doing and you're helping people and, you know, within business, uh, just re, re just, I'd say in the last year and a half, I've just realized how much the mindset goes into actually being a good a business owner, a good leader. So you really do have to, you know, have that strength, uh, within your mind to be able to, to lead and to, and to run things. And I have some questions for you, Spencer, today. I mean, you'd expect it from oh, us, like right? So uh, <laughs> you, you invited me on, so I'm gonna take advantage of this a little bit right. today. So okay. I'm a little bit curious, and I bet your listeners are too. They listen, and I've listened to, <clears throat> I, I would say, probably heard all your initial podcasts, when I say initial, probably the first 20 or so, and then uh, I haven't kept up as well. Um, but I know you've talked a little bit about your experience, but. That would be useful and helpful to sort of 
draw some parallels to what I do and what we work towards doing here in, in our office. Um, what really is at the center of your drive, your motivation, Spencer? I mean, here you are doing a podcast. You, you own your cleaning business. You've done real estate. You've done other entrepreneur things. So what, what's driving this? I like that. I like that question. And I, I like to call it, what's, what's my why? What, what, what's the why behind why I do all the things I do? And uh, really, for me, it's, it's, it's my family. Like every time I feel like, you know, oh, man, this is tough. I want to quit. <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel like I, want, I owe it to my children. I want to show them that they can, you know, show, show them what their father can do and what he can accomplish. So it can also alter their their mindset and their their point of view. So as they go out in the world, they have that idea that hey, we can accomplish anything we want us we want to do. We want to anything we want, anything I I can dream of, I can do it. And that's I'm just really trying to raise strong, resilient children. Uh, and of course, I want to be successful. So I want to be successful, and I want to have you know security for my family, and I want to have fun with them. And I'll, that all takes uh, some level of success and money. <laughs> That is a great, that, that's a, a great, uh, I think, I think it's a great response. I think it's a very honest response. Can I unpack that a little bit more? Please. Yeah. So you're, um, I talk a lot with, with patients that I meet with because the context of me seeing them is, is not, Hey, I'm here as a consultant to help you with your business. Right. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. their business is, Hey, I want to feel well. Yeah. Um, they've, they've run into trouble. They've, they're having to deal with a mental health disorder and or substance use disorder. So, uh, but again, using you as our example here to sort of work through this, you said, I heard you said your family, but it really ties into, so as a sense of responsibility as a father and what you aspire mm -hmm. to, right? Yeah. And you're wanting to sort of give them a gift of, of confidence, of, it sounds like, um, you know, hard work, determin determination, right? Yep, for sure. Uh, life can certainly make you feel like you want to give up sometimes, but you just, you keep at it. So persistence. So I'm, I'm exactly. hearing some of that and that's coming through, but I, but you could do that as, you could be working for the state somewhere, doing great work, doing who knows what, uh, <laughs> but not taking <clears throat> the risks and not taking uh, on the unknown. Um, so there's, there's even more values as, as I, as I use that term that, that you've really, something's driving you. And yeah. That, you know, that's part of it. Part of it. I think you've been <laughs> honest. It is about your kids. It is about your family yeah. and what you're trying to develop yourself to share with them, but, but to be doing all the things you're doing. I think you. You're over. You're overestimating all the things I'm doing, though. I'm, I don't work as hard as you think I work. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, you know, there, there's all sorts of, of reasons out there. You know, it started probably because I had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to prove some naysayers wrong, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's it's the thrill of the hunt, through the thrill of the chase, and uh, I just I love, you know, within my company, I love sales. I love I love to add value to people's lives. And I think with everyone in their, any business they have, you know, I think with sales, I think they always think sometimes, oh, I've, got, I've kind of got to talk someone into it. But it's, if you can, you know, if you can just add value to their lives and know that you can add value to their lives is in, a, in a business setting, uh, the money will come. So that's, you know, there's well, different things. Yeah, there's service. You're trying to provide um, something um, that really means something to other people, and uh, and be a partner of sorts, right? And whatever their whatever their endeavor is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, just to draw the parallel. So a lot of folks don't know psychiatrist means, as you pointed out in the introduction, there it means you go to medical school and then you do at least a four year. A training program sometimes more if you want to specialize to treat children or the elderly in particular um and i you know i think it was a really good uh, medical education and residency training experience but what you learn is is really on the job right 
-hmm. and you have to keep learning. And so you and I both graduated our undergraduate from ISU, but they didn't teach what you're doing there, did they? Uh, No, they did not. And it's not, you know, and I said the same thing about, you know, surgeons. If you, I don't know if you have any surgeons on your podcast, but I'm sure uh, Dr. McRoberts or other surgeons in our community, if they've been practicing for some time, they're not doing today what they were trained to do years ago. Um, So you have to, the change and evolve. And um, I think your values, as you were sharing that, um, that, that I'd say I was, I'm in the most fulfilling part of my career. And, and to be here, it was scary like anybody, because you have to step away from, I, I, I stepped away from the state hospital and employed positions with uh, our local hospital and, and other opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. To be an employee <laughs> and to have your own business um, as anybody who's, who runs their own business means you sort of have to um, have a lot of the things you were talking about um, to sort of make it work, right? Yeah. And you really need to know um, what really matters and, and feel passionately about it, right? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You, you have to have some passion for your business for sure. Right. It's, so it's for me, be... you know, my business was Look, I just didn't want to, because I didn't know, I didn't go to school and get any formal training and run a business, right? Yeah. Um, but I realized if I wanted to have the professional growth and really be able to innovate, have the autonomy, not have to ask a, a company or a board or some, some hierarchy or some bureaucracy for something as simple as I, I, I'd like a printer in my office so I can print off a treatment plan, and give it to the patient. Yeah. Right. I want every patient to get a copy of their treatment plan through a secure email system. Anyway, these these are things that I do now and have done for years, but to do that, I I realized, wow, I'm going to have to go out and figure out how to run a business. I'm still figuring that out, but with a lot of help, um, we're still going. So 11, 10, 11, 2009. So starting into our, that's great. Do you think that's kind of a downfall of the of the medical school uh, arena of not having enough business training, or do you feel like more doctors now are coming out and just want a job and not want to run their own business? Yeah, there, there's. I, I didn't. I did not know and did not think I would want. In fact, if you'd asked me, I said, "I don't want to run a business. I don't know anything about that, and that doesn't sound fun. Mm-hmm. I want to take care of patients." So I think most physicians. That's why they go to medical school because they want to take care of people and then they figure out what area of medicine is going to allow them to really be fulfilled and, do, and achieve that yeah. but as i said i was um oh i don't know probably six seven years in after residency and figuring out wow i'm gonna to have to figure out how to do private practice because i'm just not going to have the opportunity to grow and autonomy and and the innovation that fuels me because mm-hmm. um, I want good outcomes every every and, and that's been hard for lots of reasons you have to accept that I'm not going to be a, the best fit or um, have what it takes but then I recruit and I, I have partners right I have my associates yeah. here um, that they're great clinicians and, and and hopefully I help them and they certainly help me but um, you assemble a team but that's what we, we all want we want a good outcome yeah. every time we're having an opportunity to meet and start working with somebody. Okay. How do you separate uh, the, the different hats you wear? You know, at times, you know, most of the time you have the psychiatrist hat on, but then also you're running this business. Uh, is there a certain day or a certain, you know, scheduled time that you just, okay, I got to put my president CEO hat on and yeah. uh, switch gears a little bit. Well, I'm doing it today. I mean, this okay. is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, typically my Fridays, um, I still spend, you know, in some way I'm still trying to, you know, refills or phone calls or Mm -hmm. things you don't get to during the week. But uh, Friday turns into the day of, and Saturdays, um, you know, (laughs) know, I tarred the roof on this building or patched it anyway. I didn't do the whole time, but you know, I mow the lawn, trim. So, you know, you do what you gotta do. just 
to make a go of it, right? Sure. And then I feel that responsibility for those, my associates that come on and they, and I told them, look, you just want to practice and live your life. Okay, let me try and allow you to do that. And you just be part of a valuable clinical team that in some small way, hopefully we're going to, we're going to help our community. I like that. I like that. So what's your favorite part about running your business? If you were taking the, take the psychiatrist, hat off completely. And what's your favorite part of your, running your business just on the business side? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, I, and we, and we, I, we put your I, I, I think it's on. the innovation. I mean, I, okay. I have to learn every day. Um, and, and I, I, I like learning. So, yeah. you know, I'm having to learn. And I think that's something that has balanced, you know, learning clinically and developing you know, new and novel treatments and bringing those to Pocatello and my, our practice. And, um, but I think on the business side, it's, look, this business needs to support the clinical vision. And I think I, you know, who else is going to sure. look after what I'm so, it's so important to me, my clinical vision, who's going to look after it better than I'm going to. That's right. Look, I got great, I got great administrative staff, but at the end of the day, they need to go home and go do their thing. And if there's an issue, I'm the one, you know, that <laughs> needs to be responsible to, you know, get down here and work or do what I have to do and, and a helpful sure. wife, right? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> who, who's all in, who's been very supportive. That's great. Okay. So as a, as a psychiatrist, what's, what's the most uh, rewarding part of your job? I'd imagine there's a bunch of them, but you know, um, early in my career, I was fascinated with inpatient work, right? When you take some in the hospital off and come in very acutely, you know, distressed from whatever their, their mental health disorder. And then you're sorting out what, what, what's going on medically. And so using your, your physician skills, but that was rewarding. But quickly, I, I sort of figured out, um, I really work with people for the long haul, right? Because getting them better and they leave and then maybe they're back next month or they keep coming back, that's hard on them, uh, their families, uh, their goals and aspirations. Very disruptive, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, so I think being able to create and build that trust over time and then apply my trade, uh, both the science and, and then improve the art. Right, I, I feel bad for, for sure. those I treated early on in my career because um, I still got a long way to go. But I, I've learned a lot, and it's taken the patience of, of many patients to sort of allow me to learn from them and with them, and then to take the professional learning plus what I learn working with each individual and and their experience to sort of then parlay that into more indifferent and better kinds of treatments um, for the person I'm going to see today, right? Sure. So for me, working long-term, helping people really achieve um, the life they want to, to live, right? Sure. Um, no, I completely agree. It's got to be rewarding. Congratulations on spending a couple minutes getting just a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Pocatello business community. If you are feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.